you might have got exposed to this much earlier than uh, well so i thought you might have yeah so you'll have uh, more to tell us yes i, I mean it's just that, that i i've been like starting using last six months um, i may be you know a little prejudiced in my under, um, understanding about this uh, small probe but anyway we'll, we'll let us hear from okay. yes, yeah, my yes. my main intent is to um, just give a brief idea of if somebody is uh, somebody wants to buy some ultrasound device uh, what parameters they look at generally that that's what i'm going to say rather than um, yes, rather than giving a review of one particular device so yeah there are these are few examples of common uh, handheld devices that we have on the market here uh, on the top left we have cosmos uh, which comes with a probe uh, which is uh, connected with a wire to its proprietary tablet Uh, here is the Philips Lumify, which comes with a wire, and you can connect it to your phone or tablet. In the middle is the GE VScan Air. It's a wireless probe, just like the one Dr. Arvind just showed, and it can be connected wirelessly to your device. And um, on the uh, right upper quadrant is uh, your Butterfly. Butterfly is a relatively cheap device, uh, which can be connected to your phone or tablet. Uh, it's a wired device, and you don't need to have multiple probes just one probe does all the imaging and uh, the right lower quadrant is a clarius which is also another wireless device um, it's been uh, there around for a long time and uh, you can see multiple devices we use here here is our big machine um, on the left that i was carrying and in the middle uh, this person is carrying cosmos you can see the tablet you can you can hold it with your hand and uh, this person is carrying gev scan it's not air but the uh, older version of gev scan which consists of a dual probe that means you can flip the probe and you have uh, different applications and on the right uh, in my hand is a wireless device another one uh, it's called wave v a v e um, it's another uh, newest wireless uh, available it, it's probably the cheapest to and uh, who would really benefit from handheld device are the people who have need to travel from place to place that means who need enhanced portability and uh, because their price is cheaper if you cannot afford more money if your hospital system cannot support you uh, to buy a bigger ultrasound machine for those people it will be more helpful uh, having said that um, it's uh, i mean handheld machines are not equal to a traditional Uh, portable ultrasound machine in terms of capabilities and also i mean it, they might not be equal but uh, you don't always need to have a top notch imaging as long as you know what applications what sonographic applications you are doing you don't want to ask a, a complex clinical question at the bedside and uh, try to use uh, a, a cheap machine to answer that Uh, with limited capability so if you're asking a simple question rule out pericardial effusion or rule out um, pleural effusion like you just saw uh, the smaller machines are adequate and in terms of image quality here are few more uh, images i do mostly cardiac and lung imaging for hemodynamics so um, and uh, so on the left side is a uh, traditional echo machine uh, in the same machine you use philips lumify Uh, and they look pretty comparable it's just that for major things like rule out pericardial effusion or to get an idea of the left ventricular systolic function uh, they look pretty much the same uh, but the big machine gives you better endocardial border definition which is needed um, to assess uh, how is the real ejection fraction and also if you look at this picture here on the top there is some graininess to it so if you are missing the left ventricular apex here you can miss clots why does nephrologist care about clots so i have cardio renal clinic so you have patients with reduced left ventricular systolic function who are prone prone to developing clots and clots usually form in the cardiac apex in the uh, in the left ventricle that is not working well but other than that philips lumify is a great machine uh, in terms of image quality and uh, in the right lower quadrant is a butterfly same patient you can see there is so much graininess to it it's a butterfly is a cheaper machine so it has so much graininess and and this here is called the near field artifact the graininess i'm talking about um at the beginning of the picture so you can easily miss much uh, larger pathology here compared to when you are using lumify and also valvular structure is not clearly seen so it's Dr. not Abhilash, could you use the yes. pointer 
because there are multiple images so if you can oh i'm sorry i, I thought i've been using uh, are you able to see it now ah yes yeah okay so the, this right lower quadrant is the butterfly thing so if you are looking at the walls here they are not really clear so if you are dealing with a dialysis patient with endocarditis you can easily miss small vegetations so again it all depends on your purpose your purpose is to rule out pericardial effusion get an idea of left ventricular ejection or confirm the placement of central line by injecting a uh, agitated saline these uh, cheaper things are fine here is another example using my ge logic machine which is a, uh, the card based machine that i uh, showed you before this is a parasternal long axis view of the heart in a hyperdynamic patient it's beating so hard and uh, uh this is with, in the middle it's with cosmos which is a high end probe which is relatively expensive and it looks pretty similar uh, to the one obtained with a card based machine um and no complaints there but the patient was relatively thin built so so but if the patient is a little more obese um the um, the traditional machine might be better and uh, here is the gev scan another uh, handheld device so here you can see that the image has become little more grainy so with the grainy image the problem is you can't see smaller lesions again it's fine when you're looking for pericardial effusion or lv function here is looking at the kidney ultrasound on the left is a uh, traditional machine uh, and you can nicely compare the echogenicity of um, cortex and the liver and you can see the medullary pyramids and as you use the handheld devices even with upscale handheld devices uh the graininess comes in these are more optimized for cardiac imaging and thoracic imaging or or more trauma use because most of the ultrasound is used by uh, emergency medicine physicians and critical care physicians uh, they don't care so much about uh, specifically about the kidney or um assessing the parenchymal characteristics of abdominal organs so here you, you can see that you don't see the uh, pyramids anymore it's hard to compare the echogenicity and uh, sometimes it can be labeled as um, decreased corticomedullary differentiation and uh, uh, which can be a marker of ckd but in reality in adults it doesn't really mean much in most of the patients even when you are using big machines you don't see medullary pyramids clearly that should never be mistaken for ckd and as you go to this gev scan uh, which is a mid range uh, machine it becomes even more grainy so these machines are good to rule out hydronephrosis uh, or maybe Uh, look at a big cyst or stone but if you have smaller lesions you can easily miss using handheld devices so again your what what you are using the ultrasound for is important here is a comparison from wave device that i tested a um, few months before it is one of the cheapest machines uh, and uh, it's wireless but the image quality is very grainy uh, you you like if you observe closely you feel like there are some holes um in the in the parent time of the heart but regardless again uh, this is a subcostal view of the heart you are comparing it with the card based machine on the right and this is the wave overall it's not bad you get a decent idea there is a little bit of pericardial effusion this blackish area here apart from that you don't want to assess anything say if, if there is a vegetation here you are going to miss it if there is a clot here in the right atrium you will probably miss it as opposed to this one here and uh, again this wave looking at the inferior vena cava which is another common application on the right is my conventional machine here it's very clear you can even assess the liver parenchymal characteristics of the patient has cirrhosis or fatty liver um, you can look at the vessels clearly you can see trace pericardial effusion here uh, here this white thing here in the inside the ivc is a smoke usually seen in people with sluggish circulation here like a whole picture appears like smoke here like every, everything is um uh, there is some graininess to the picture but regardless if you just want to look at the inferior vena cava walls if you want to measure the diameter this machine is good enough too so again ag again and again it depends upon your purpose and this is a butterfly one of the relatively cheap machines uh if your purpose is to assess a dialysis fistula get, get decent grayscale imaging of fistula aid in cannulation you can use butterfly this is this image is from dr nayer's uh, recent paper where they looked at uh, how a point of care ultrasound facilitates cannulation in their dialysis unit and it seen just looking at these pictures you know that it's um, uh, pretty good but again you don't want to use butterfly for uh, cardiac imaging uh, and it won't be that great 
and uh, you can use cheaper devices for performing lung ultrasound. Most of the lung ultrasound is just about um, interpreting the artifacts, that is horizontal A lines or vertical B lines or the pleural effusion that you saw. For that purpose, handheld devices are okay. And uh, then you have to look for options available. The common thing that we use is color Doppler. This is a regular card-based machine. Here I'm looking at the tricuspid regurgitation. This is the right side of the heart. And here is the jet, very well-defined, uh, a jet with mixed colors. This is the Cosmos device, which is relatively expensive, but the jet is not well-defined. But generally you get an idea that there is moderate tricuspid regurgitation. There is significant amount of jet going back into the right atrium. But if you want to exactly measure how much is the width of the um, uh, jet, for you, you, which, uh, you need to quantify, you might not be able to do it well using this device. But generally, Qualitative assessment of tricuspid regurgitation, it's great. And the other options are spectral Doppler uh, that Dr. Vail was uh, showing just now uh, in the kidney. So this is the, um, this is the, the Cosmos device is the only device that has both continuous wave and pulsed wave Doppler, which are both used in cardiac applications. Uh, and the butterfly is coming up with uh, uh, pulsed wave Doppler application, but it's still uh, rudimentary compared to this one. And with this, you can assess the right ventricular systolic pressure. Here is a uh, kidney image showing uh, severely congested renal vein. So for basic things, uh, I mean, for, for, for pulsed wave Doppler uh, applications, um, machine like Cosmos is good. And, uh, um, and spectral Doppler, just because you have spectral Doppler or pulsed wave Doppler, it's, it's not necessarily adequate. You don't have all the bells and whistles that a bigger machine has. Again, you need to know your purpose. For example, here I'm trying to measure the stroke volume of the, uh, through the left ventricular outflow tract, you get a nice tracing of each um, uh, pulse with uh, each heartbeat. But again, you cannot adjust the uh, width of this thing. So you need to adjust the width. And that means adjust the sweep speed to be able to trace this, uh, um, uh, waveform nicely and get an idea of the stroke volume. So with this, like if it's so narrow, you will get mistaken calculations. Similarly, you can change color of these uh, waveforms in the bigger machine. And some patients might need a different color to be able to define the waveform better. And some options when you are doing more advanced stuff like a venous excess uh, Doppler assessment, you need EKG, a traditional machine offers EKG. Like, uh, these expensive handheld machines like Cosmos also offer EKG, but it's hard to have this device in one hand and a short card EKG, you attach all these things and uh, you, you carry the probe with one hand. It, it doesn't give you much space uh, to operate. You need to take into consideration all these things. And some devices come with artificial intelligence and image guidance also. On the left, you're seeing a GEV scan, uh, which can calculate ejection fraction for you. But again, it's not foolproof. It only it, all these calculations are as good as only your uh, image acquisition skills. If your image acquisition skill is not good, the auto EF and, and all these packages are not going to help you. Some devices like Cosmos also offer image guidance, which means they tell you like in which directions you, uh, direction you have to move the probe to get an optimal image. It, and also it auto labels all these parts for you once you acquire an image, but it does not necessarily um, uh, help you once, once you're already comfortable with image acquisition. And if you are spending extra money for this, um, you have to decide if it's really worth or not, if you have trainees with you or not. So otherwise, I don't think it's, it's really that helpful uh, to have this guidance. And also other question would be like, would you want to choose a machine with one or multiple transducers? So for example, Philips Lumify comes with multiple transducers, all these traditional uh, probes that you see, linear probe for vascular applications, curvilinear probe for abdominal applications, and phased array probe for cardiac applications. And Butterfly combines all these things into one, um, but the disadvantage is that when you combine all these things, when you're not using the traditional piezoelectric uh, crystals, the image quality is compromised, but Philips Lumify image quality is excellent. And here is GEV scan air. Uh, it's not technically uh, three in one, but you have this curvilinear uh, uh, side here, you have a linear side here, so you can perform vascular applications through this side and curvilinear or abdominal applications through this side. Um, and the footprint matters. What I mean is like so the footprint is the face of the probe. So linear probe footprint is uh, like this linear, obviously curvilinear probe is uh, C-shaped like this. 
And this is the phased area or cardiac probe, which is squarish and small. Here is the butterfly um, um, handheld probe, which is bigger than this. So why, why it matters is if you are performing heart ultrasound, you are looking at the heart through these rib interspaces or intercostal spaces. You need to be able to manipulate the probe nicely. So you need to have a small footprint. So this is a traditional heart probe. This, this has much smaller footprint compared to butterfly. So that's why using butterfly makes it a little hard. And how does these devices like V-Scan Air with only that curvilinear part uh, help you do cardiac ultrasound? So when you put the cardiac preset, instead of waves coming from all through the surface, waves just uh, come from one part in the middle of the probe, that way it facilitates imaging through the ribs. But again, there are different views of the heart apart from the standard views. If you want to do more, you cannot easily rotate the probe between the ribs. It's still a significant uh, 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 disadvantage in my opinion. And uh, touch screen and wireless uh, things. So you can have touch screen, that's great. Uh, but you, you also have to see if, how responsive it is when you are wearing gloves and uh, when you have some gel on the gloves for whatever reason, sometimes they become uh, less responsive. And you need to check all these things before buying a device and you probably, you, you better ch uh, check them for a few days. And uh, when, where, where are you going to put this tablet or phone when you're doing procedures? So if you're putting it somewhere on the patient's bed or somewhere, are you able to sanitize them? Like Dr. Arvind showed, maybe it's better if you're just rounding with this device in a dialysis unit, maybe you buy a uh, small stand for this device and, and take it from patient to patient. And is the screen size optimal for me? Because you might not be using only for your purpose, you might have trainees with you. If you have a larger screen, like compared to this uh, holding a phone or tablet, more people will be able to visualize what you're doing. Same is the case with patient education. I do ultrasound um, in, in uh, clinic. So it's always easier for me to just talk to the patient and show the images while I'm acquiring the images rather than storing all the images and again, going to the patient and uh, sh showing those images in the phone. So I always prefer big screen um, whenever possible. And lastly, safe storage of data is important because you're sometimes sharing, uh, sorry, saving uh, patient's data and you might be sharing these devices, uh, make sharing the images very easy with Wi-Fi. Uh, that's an advantage, but again, the disadvantage is if you lose the phone or if you're losing indiscriminately, the patient data is at risk and we have uh, strict laws governing how you can use patient data. And also uh, here, ideally, if you want to bill for the images, you need to be uh, saving the images in a uh, centralized system. So you need to check with your um, hospital IT of how feasible it is. And also, though they might appear cheap, some devices come with hidden uh, costs like annual subscription. So the butterfly is one example of which where you have to pay about $420 per year uh, to be able to keep saving the images. And sometimes additional uh, options are at a cost. Initially, they might say the device is only like uh, something say $4,000 and for every option, they keep charging like as if you're buying a luxury car. And uh, also anticipate evolution of your skills. Initially, you might think I, I never saw the heart or I, or I never did lung ultrasound. I mean, let me buy a cheap device, but skills grow in no time. Uh, I, you, you keep evolving, say, for example, in volume status assessment, the person learns IVC ultrasound and thinks I'm, I'm expert in volume status assessment. Eventually, as you grow, you learn that, okay, now I need a little more than learn lung ultrasound. Now I'm an expert. But later you realize that lung and IVC are not enough. There are several caveats. I need to learn heart ultrasound. And then as you grow further, you learn basic cardiac is not enough. I need to know some Doppler parameters. And as you grow further, you realize you do so many things, Doppler echo, venous Doppler, IVC, lung and everything. Then you still learn that there is still so much to hemodynamics. There is yet time to, for you to become a big tree. And if you go to YouTube and online, you just go to YouTube and find like Google, uh, like search whatever device you want to uh, look for, you will find reviews. I really don't need to uh, expand on this slide. Uh, my purpose is not to show you the individual devices, but just to give an overview of what parameters you want to take into consideration. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Abhilash. I think uh, I, I, I really extracted whatever I wanted my audience to hear from both of you.